Hey, coffee lovers, Mark here from A Whole Latte Love. I have the Profitech Drive with me. You know, it was about 10 years ago that I was first introduced to this machine's predecessor, the Profitech Pro 700. Uh, you know, we have a lot of history with the 700. It's appeared in more than 60 of our videos. Also, one of the best reviewed machines of all time with a 4.9 out of five star rating. So the drive here, it's replacing the 700. It's got a lot of new features that we'll get into. Um, I, now, it, this machine does have Italian roots. Profitech's now making this machine in Heidelberg, Germany. So back a few years ago, while in Italy, I got a chance to visit Profitech's manufacturing facility outside of Milan. Now, while there, I got to see how they hand make their products, how they do their testing, meet some of their engineers and speak with them. And I also spent some time talking with our CEO, Michael Hawk, about their philosophy when it comes to their machines. You know, they wanna make superior machines, but they do come out of servicing espresso machines. So it was very important that they make reliable products. And some more history and a touch of transparency. If you look behind me here, there's a couple more drives back there on the counter. Now, those are pre-production units. I think they're serial numbers two and three. Um, Proftech sent those to us, I think it was about five months ago, so we could do some evaluation and testing and provide some feedback to them. And, you know, that's just a part of our involvement. You know, back, you go back, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, we worked with them to bring uh, higher steaming power, some class leading steaming power to a lot of their machines. And we also worked with them to get flow control integrated onto their E61 machines. You've got flow control on the drive here, and that is now, that comes stock on the drive. So coming up, we'll get into all the new features available on the drive, like the quick heating mode. Uh, can you really be ready to make a coffee on a machine like this in 10 to 12 minutes? We're gonna find out. Um, it's also got active and passive pre-infusion that's time programmable, that's kind of neat. Uh, we have the quick steam valves. You know, the Pro 700 had regular knob valves. Now we're going to quick steam joystick valves over here. We've also got programmable on and off times, two per day, per day of week. It's a feature a lot of people have asked for on this type of machine. Coming up, I'll have a lot of test results for this machine. We'll take a look at brew temperature accuracy at a bunch of temperatures. We'll check out steaming times. We're gonna have a graph of the flow rates for the flow control. And I'm also gonna take a look at how that quick heating did as far as temperature accuracy. And I'm gonna answer a couple very basic questions about the use of this machine that I came across on Reddit and Home Barista. So I'll also take a look at a couple of things that really set the drive apart from similar competing machines. You know, under the hood, compared to the Pro 700, its predecessor, not a lot has changed. You know, there is a battery in there now for to uh, hold the you know time of day in memory, um, so you can have that time of day programmability. Um, but you know, Profitech really adheres to the Kiss design principle: the keep it simple, stupid. You know, that's all about the reliability. What has changed is the new control panel, the old OLED display over there. He uses actual, you know, plain language there. So you know what function you're accessing. You know, it used to be on a lot of PID machines. You know, you had to look up some cryptic code to know what you were changing. But, you know, with a new display and the actual language used there, it makes those extra functions and features just so much easier to take advantage of. So the basics on the Profitech drive over here. This is a top of the line prosumer level machine. Dual boiler, rotary pump, plumbable, PID, of course, a ton of new features that we'll talk about. You know, there's this term called upgrade-itis that gets thrown around sometimes when you're, you know, buying a higher end product. You know, it's like where you buy not quite the best and then you decide, yeah, I want something a little bit better. I can tell you with a drive here, that's not gonna happen. No chance of upgrade-itis. So to me, a couple of things that really stand out about Profitech and the drive here especially, um, you know, first of all is the internal quality. You know, again, they use that KISS design principle. You know, there's just one electromechanical valve inside this machine, a solenoid valve. Go inside some other similar machines, you're gonna find a couple of those. Now, why do I like the one valve? Well, because they can be a point of failure down the road. Now, if you take care of your machine, usually not a problem, but just having more makes, you know, something going wrong more likely. You know, so a lot of machines will have a solenoid valve on the plumbed in connection. On the drive here, they're gonna use an actual real live mechanical valve. You know, when you turn yourself, it's just so much more reliable. And when you look around inside, you see all the wiring is laid out, you know, sensitive components are 
protected from heat and moisture. Moisture sources are routed outside of the machine. It's just a really nice build quality inside. Now, when you check out the outside of the drive here, it's luxury level finishing. Not a sharp edge to be found. Everything's beautifully polished and finished. You know, one area I often check for, you know, how much detail goes into a machine is the internal seams in the drip tray here. You know, if a company is spending time and finishing those so they're beautiful, that really says something about the overall build quality. So I also pay attention to what kind of fasteners are used in a machine like this. You know, what's holding this thing together? So here on the drive, they're using precision grade hex head bolts. Very nice, those go into metal fasteners. You know, some machines you'll go and you know, they cut the quality there a little bit. They, you know, lower quality metals, you know, maybe Phillips head screws going into plastic anchors. You're not gonna find any of that on the Profitech drive. Also notice a quick steam joystick lever operated valves are very robust. These guys are big. Uh, they even have, you know, the Profitech name embossed in the side. And in fact, these are the same valves that are used on their sister company, that's ECM, um, on their flagship Synchronica machine. You know, we've gotten a lot of requests over the years. People want to get rid of the knobs and go to more of this, you know, this joystick lever operated valve. And that's what they've done with the drive. So let's get into some test results. I've got them right here. We're gonna do brew temperature testing um, at, at three different temperature settings. We'll take a look at uh, milk frothing. Uh, we'll see how long it takes at different temperature settings and how much moisture it adds to your milk. And we'll take a look at some flow rate testing, you know, how to operate the flow control, what the stock flow rate is, and at various valve positions, what kind of flow rates you're gonna get. So to test the brew temperatures in the machine, I use this Passato TPD device that allows you to get a reading of temperature right inside the port filter also gets you the pressure then it's got a little control down here so that you can adjust the flow rate out of the port filter so you can really simulate an extraction so what i did is i tested the machine at 196 200 and 204 degrees fahrenheit kind of use the sca method there where you do a short little flush about three seconds uh, before each test then when you change temperatures we do a flush of uh, a little bit of water out of the boiler and then allow it about 15 minutes for everything to equalize before testing at the next temperature. So for the results, I noted the most common observed temperature and the highest after brew pressure was reached in the test device and temperature stabilized to you know, get rid of any lag in those readings and then recorded the maximum deviation from the set temperature. Now, here are those results. These are, you know, really pretty good. Actually excellent with average observed temps matching up, you know, really nicely that within about one degree Fahrenheit of the PID setting and those max temps very close as well. Now, the maximum deviation I observed was 1.9 degrees and that was at the end of the 196 degree test. Now, for reference, that's about, you know, a difference of one degree Celsius. Now, I wanna let you know, I did use the Posado here to do a little testing before I did those brew temperature tests. Um, I wanted to find out what my boiler offset should be. Um, and mine turned out I was getting the best performance when I set it to minus three. That doesn't mean, you know, if you get this machine, that's what you should do because that boiler offset, it's just a difference in temperature uh, between what's really in the boiler and what's coming out at the group. Um, you know, due to your local conditions, uh, might be a little different. I'm at 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit in here. You know, if it's a lot hotter or colder, I might need to change a little bit. I think, you know, in most cases, uh, most people aren't really gonna need to mess with that at all. But, 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 the really nice thing is, is it's very easy to access on the drive here with the, the way the menu works here with the, you know, real language in there. You know, a lot of machines I've worked with, PID machines, you gotta do like special keystrokes or get into some sort of technician's menu with some cryptic labeling to get up boiler offsets. Not the case here. You just pop through the menu to where it says boiler offset and you can change it. To test milk frothing, I mean, these are standard tests. We're gonna take five ounces. That's about what, 150, 148 milliliters um, of milk up to a finish temperature of 140. So we're gonna take it out of the fridge, put it in the pitcher, start around 40, 45 degrees, see how long it takes. So the first test, um, I set to our maximum steam boiler temperature, 270 degrees, which gets us about 1.75 bar in the boiler. Now, look at the froth there, it's really nice. Now, I'm also gonna have some results, see how much water was added during that steaming. Uh, but anyhow, total time there, it was about 21 seconds. Now for the second test, I turned the boiler all the way down to its lowest temperature, it's around 240. Um, and there, you're gonna get a little bit more time. So I mean, that's a nice thing about a dual boiler. You can 
it, you know, the total time there for, at the lowest temperature was about 38 and a half seconds. Um, so what that gets you is, you know, you can set that pressure to match your frothing skill. If you want a little more time to work the milk, you can turn that pressure down. So there's a chart of our results. As you can see, we had, you know, again, 21 seconds at the highest setting to get to 140 and about 38 and a half at the lowest temperature setting. Now, you also see the, uh, you know, the starting and ending weight difference there. Um, you know, that measures how much water was added to the milk during steaming. Um, so at our highest temperature, I got 14.7 grams and at our lowest temperature was 17.1 grams. And, you know, if you look around, that's pretty decent. You know, often, you know, I, I consider 10% um, or is really good. And at our highest temperature, that's where we were, less than 10% added. Um, a little bit more when we went with a slower steaming. But, you know, if you look at most machines, you're gonna see, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20% water added. So the results there are really nice. So the drive here, it does come uh, with flow control stock on the machine. Uh, that's a little control up here. And with that, it also gets you the group pressure gauge, so you always know what your pressure is in the portafilter, so you can ma manipulate extractions using that pressure if you like. Couple things to know. First, stock flow rate, uh, if you, know, you didn't have flow control or you wanna run it as though you didn't, is 11 grams per second. And how to get that on this machine is you open this valve from the closed position, no flow out of the group, with the pump running, you open at one and a quarter turns and that gets you the stock flow rate. Another thing, you know, I've worked with some people who have, you know, just gotten a flow control machine and they wanna, they, they wanna open this valve all the way. Believe me, you generally don't wanna do that um, because the rotary pump can move a lot of water in this machine. If you open the valve the whole way, you can end up running it nearly two and a half times, uh, like, you know, 25, 26, 27 grams per second. There are some special cases, like maybe you wanna simulate a lever shot or something like that, where that can be useful, so it's nice to have that available. But in general, you're gonna to wanna to stay at one and a quarter or below, you know, depending on the profile you're running. Um, but let's take a look. So here's that chart of flow rates at various valve positions. So notice in the graph there, it's a very linear progression as you open the valve. That is until you get up around that, uh, you know, two, two full turns open, we're gonna be running, you know, like 26 grams per second, way, way, way more than the stock flow rate of 11 grams per second. So in most cases, you know, you're gonna wanna stick around, you know, that one and a quarter turns open. Um, now, if you're not familiar with uh, flow control, I'm gonna link a video up here, it'll be down in the description there as well, with two really simple methods to use flow control to improve your flavor. One's gonna deal with lighter, uh, very fresh from row specialty coffees. So it'll help you reduce the brightness in those. There's another one that you can use with uh, darker roasts or maybe a coffee that's a little bit beyond its prime freshness. You can help reduce the bitterness in those um, or maybe help get rid of some stale flavors. And another you know, easy way you can use fl flow is, you know, if you notice maybe your grind's a little too coarse, your shot's coming too fast, you can decrease the flow rate and save a shot when maybe your grind's not quite right. Now, aside from the flow control here, those new quick steam valves, um, the new design of the cup rail here, and that cup rail is removable, by the way, if you, you know, have some overhead cabinetry and you're gonna plumb in the machine or something and you don't need it, you can take that off if you need a little more clearance there. Um, you also, in the back, there's a, the Profitech logo is cut out of the back of the machine, it looks really pretty. But the really big change, of course, you know, we talked a little bit about it, is the OLED display and all that you can do there and how it makes it so easy and accessible to use those functions. Now, when the machine is on and idle, it's gonna show you the temperature in both boilers. After a while, it kind of goes into a mode where it, that crawls across the screen. Um, you'll also get messages there, like, you know, if you're using the quick heating mode, uh, that the machine is heating up. Um, you also get a message there maybe to flush after the quick heating mode. Um, and what else? Let's see, it can, uh, it'll also, oh, and when you're, after you do the flush, it'll say ready go when you've flushed it enough if uh, you're using the quick heating mode. Um, so really nice. Now to get into any function, all you do is just press and hold those two buttons. Now if it's gone into that mode where it's, the stuff is crawling across the display, you kind of need to wake the display up by just hitting a button. But then you press and hold two buttons, then that'll get you into the menus. Then you use the down key over here to cycle through the menu items. To select one, you use the up key and then use the up and down uh, keys there to change the parameter. So we'll take a look at everything we have available in the menus here. Right now it's showing my coffee boiler at 200, my steam temperatures at 267 to get in, just press and hold. 
for a few seconds here until it changes and we use the down button to cycle through. So we've got brew temperature, steam enable, steam temperature, pre-infusion settings, eco mode settings, cleaning reminder, reset reminder, advanced user settings, I have that on so we see all the rest of these things, filter reminder, timer enable, clock set, tank mode for reservoir or plumbed, temperature unit, Celsius or Fahrenheit, then coffee offset correction, and then enable fast heating. If I just don't do anything for about five seconds, it reverts back to the main display and saves any changes you made. So there's everything that's available in those menus, but let's take a look at how you'd program a couple of the key functions. So like for brew and steam pressure, so you'd press and hold both buttons, and then once you're in, you use the down button to the cycle to the one that you want to change, then use the up button and then down button, up and down to change to the temperature you want. Now, if you don't do anything for five seconds, it's gonna automatically save your setting. So you do kind of you know, need to make those changes quickly. So that pre-infusion that we saw back there, um, that's a new feature on the drive here. It wasn't available on the 700. Um, so you go in there and you can turn pre-infusion totally on and off. Then you also have settings for active and passive pre-infusion. So you can set times for those. The active pre-infusion, typically you'd only use that when you're running from the machine's internal reservoir. What it does is it turns the pump on for the time that you've set there. Then the passive pre-infusion, that the pump will stop during that time um, until the time elapses and then the pump will come back on to complete the extraction. Um, so if you were plumb and using a plumbed in connection, you want to have the active pre-infusion off and only use a passive pre-infusion. What that does is you'll lift the lever and then uh, the pump won't come on, but line pressure from your plumb connection will be applied to the coffee for the time that you've set there. So the drive does have programmable on off time. So you go in and you set the time of day and day of week. And then for each day of the week, you have two on off times. But let's talk about the fast heating, which is a feature that can have the machine ready to go and make you a coffee in you know, somewhere between 11 and 13 minutes. So what that does is it's gonna overheat the brew boiler. So it's gonna take it to 130 Celsius or about 266 Fahrenheit, and it's gonna hold it there for 270 seconds. And what that's doing is just helping get the, uh, the group head here heated up quicker. Now I've tested um, you know, normal E61 machines, and it's usually about 25 to 30 minutes uh, to reach uh, temperature stability at the group head, if you measure the surface temperature here. Now on, on the drive, it's gonna hold there for the 270 seconds, then what happens is it's gonna give you a flush, flush message in the display. So what you then do is flush the machine to remove some of that overheated water from the boiler, and you're gonna keep that flush going, it's about 20 seconds until you get a ready go message in the display. And then you're gonna be right around your set PID temperature and ready to make a coffee. And again, you know, it took, it was about 11 minutes for me until I could make a coffee here. Um, you know, if you miss that one minute, no big deal. What's gonna happen then is that, you know, it, it'll still say flush in the display, but it's gonna show you the boiler temperature, that extra heating's gonna stop and it will come back down to your PID set temperature. Now, before it gets there, you could always do a little flush, probably not the 20 seconds. You know, it's gonna depend on how, how close you are to your brew temperature um, to get back down there, uh, but you do a little flush to, to make the machine ready right away. Now, of course, I wanted to know how accurate the brew temperatures were if you go ahead and use the fast heating. So I got out my TPD again um, and attached it to the machine and turned the machine on. Now I ended up getting the flush message at about 10 minutes and 20 seconds or so, and then I flushed until I saw the ready go. Then I emptied out the TPD, reattached it. Now, if, if you watch here, initially my flow rate through the device, it's a, it's a little high. It's really not representing the amount of restriction I'd have from an actual extraction. And that resulted in my temperature briefly spiking to 205.8. Now, after a few seconds, it dropped back to 203, and that's just a few degrees off my PID setting of 200. Now, I believe if, you know, maybe I'd better controlled the flow at the start of that test and I had, you know, so much uh, water coming out, I would have been even closer to my PID setting. So, you know, the bottom line here, you know, having fairly accurate temps at, you know, really just 11 minutes after turn on is really impressive for an E61 machine. And again, you know, for steaming in hot water, the service boiler, 
uh, starts heating during that fast heating cycle once you know it gets up to the you know higher temperature and then in my case that was about six minutes after turning the machine on and it was at about 14 minutes after turn on that the vacuum relief closed indicating the machine reached boiling point you know 100 degrees Celsius to 12 Fahrenheit. And then it was 15 minutes until it hit the minimum steam temperature and 16 minutes until it reached the maximum steaming temperature. You know, you could there after about, you know, you could about 14 and a half minutes or so, you could be putting out water for an Americano. And then after 15 minutes, you could easily be steaming milk. So a couple of basic questions I came across on Home Barista uh, and Reddit in regards to the machine. First one was, um, can you use a smart plug on this machine? I know a lot of people do that um, so that their machine can be up and ready. I mean, you do have the programmable on and off and the quick heating on here. Um, but the answer to that, yes, you can. Um, you know, it's a different sort of power switch than we see on a lot of machines, but it's still a mechanical switch. So if you use a smart plug, you can just leave that switch on. And when the smart plug, you know, comes on, you know, you could do, be doing that remotely with a, an app or something or through a timer, um, the machine will come on. And another question I came across, I think it was on Reddit, uh, was some speculation on what active pre-infusion does. There, you know, the user thought maybe it ran uh, the, the pump until a certain pressure was reached. That's not the case. Um, it just runs the pump for the time that you have set under active pre-infusion. And again, with the active pre-infusion, you only really wanna use that if you're running the machine from the reservoir. Um, you'd use own passive, you'd turn that off and use passive pre-infusion only if you were plumbed to a water line where you're gonna use the line pressure in that line um, to pre-infuse your coffee. And a little note on that as well, if you're gonna plumb the machine in, you know, do put a pressure regulator on there. Um, ProfTech specifies an input pressure of one to two bar and PSI, that's uh, about 15 to 30 PSI. And that's gonna be below most service line pressures, at least here in the US. They're usually, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, 50 to maybe even 90 PSI. So you do wanna make sure that you put a pressure regulator on the machine if you're running from a plumbed in connection. In the box with the ProfTech drive, you've got a single and double spout portafilter and filter baskets, uh, a really nice tamper. They've really upgraded that a lot. Um, and those portafilters and the tamper, those are twist and change. Um, so you can really customize those with some different wood components and it makes it really easy to do that. We'll talk more about the customizing in a moment. Um, you also get the braided stainless line. Uh, that's for plumbing the machine in. Uh, let's see, back flush disc. Uh, there's a little cup that you attach. Uh, if you wanna connect direct to a drain line, there's a little cup that you attach underneath the drip tray here and then you pop out the uh, little stopper in the drip tray, then you can attach it permanently to a drain line. There's a group brush in there as well um, and also a really nice user manual so I mentioned those customizing options again really easy to customize the port filter handles um, and stuff like the uh, tamper there because they're twist and change they just come apart it used to be a they, that kind of stuff was all glued together and not really changeable so really easy to do that now um, in fact I've got one all dressed up kind of in the back here one of our pre-production units with some of the wood stuff even a ProfTech T64 grinder dressed out in some custom wood options so you can get kind of a matching set there. You know, along with, the, with that, you can also do the quick steam uh, lever operated valves here. You can get wood components for that and for the E61 lever so you can have a full matching set if you'd like. Now, when you get into a machine like this, really, I mean, any espresso machine, you really wanna filter your water. Um, you know, the calcium in most people's tap water can cause scale in machines. So you'll want to prevent that. Um, very difficult, you know, end users really shouldn't descale a dual boiler machine. So why not just prevent it in the first place and also do stuff remove, like removing chlorination from your water. So we like uh, solutions from BWT. All of the solutions I'll discuss use calcium to magnesium ion exchange. So you remove that calcium, replace it with magnesium. Um, so you get the minerals you need for good flavor and corrosion production in your machine, but it will not cause scale if you use it as directed. So a couple options for that. For, if you're gonna use a reservoir in the machine, the best safe pad filter is just drop in. It's got that calcium and magnesium ion exchange and activated carbon for removing chlorination. That does require some residence time in the reservoir. So if you're going through more than a reservoir full a day, it's maybe not the best solution. Um, for, if, for higher demand, they have the Aqualizer Pitcher, which uses that same technology, so you won't have scale. If you're gonna plumb the machine, check out BWT's Best Max Premium System. Again, it uses that ion exchange, 
uh, particle filtration and carbon filtration. Um, so that's gonna go in line with your plumbed in connection. It also includes, you can get a uh, pressure regulator for that, which is important because you need to drop your line pressure if you're gonna plumb in a machine. So where do you go from here? Maybe you're interested in the drive, but you want a little more, you've got more questions. I mean, hopefully I've told you, you know, most of what you need to know, but if you want to, you can get a free live one-on-one -on -one video demo with a product expert that can take you through this machine. They can even, you know, set up another, compare it with other available products. Make sure you're getting what you really want, answer any of your questions. They can even pair it with a grinder for you, you know, something that'll work really well with the machine. You know, I do wanna say I really like the drive here. The, what it, I, I guess the key thing, you know, the Pro, it's built off the Pro 700 and that's a fantastic machine. Uh, but the key thing here is the way it's, integrated some of the new features like the pre-infusion, the quick heating, in a way that's really accessible and easy to use. I mean, I spent a long time, way, you know, more than a decade working with PID machines and, you know, going into those menus and pushing a lot of buttons and knowing, you know, what a three letter code means or something. It makes it kind of, you know, inaccessible to use for some people. So this makes it really easy to really take advantage of those functions. I also like that they've included the flow control here. Again, you can run the machine at its total stock flow rate just by opening that valve one and a quarter turns and then you know only really use it when you need to, when, it, when the situation calls for it. So of course, if you have any questions, you can schedule a coffee caster. You know, drop me a line down in the comments there and I'll get you as detailed an answer as I possibly can. I do love talking to you guys. I'm Mark, thanks so much for watching. If you like this stuff, do subscribe, and I hope to see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.